Okay, everybody, let's take a look at graphing inequalities in two variables. What I have here on the chart is just a comparison of what it looks like if you have an equation, uh, y is equal to 3 halves x plus 3. Okay, the y-intercept is at the point 0, 3, right? That would be here, okay? And then 3 over 2 is rise over run. So we could also say negative 3 over negative 2, which would be 3 halves. So we could rise 3, run 2, and get to another point. Or we could fall 3, run backwards 2. As long as it simplifies back up to the original sign of the slope. So this is... These are three points on this line. Okay, so that's easily done now. Hopefully you guys are getting the hang of graphing lines, especially with the slope-intercept form. So that's what we're going to use. We're going to use slope-intercept form to accomplish this uh, skill. Now, here I have a very similar inequality. The only difference between these two problems is there's an inequality. is a less than or equal to instead of the equal sign on the right. And so, it's y is less than 3 halves, okay? On the y-axis, the values that are, are less than or below the actual line would be what they're needing shaded, okay? So, we need to shade actually everything below the line that gets graphed when you have it solved for y, okay? So, y is less than or greater than mx plus b. So we want to put our inequalities into slope-intercept form. Then graph the line with the slope-intercept form. Now, there's a, a way, notice this is less than or equal to, okay? And so we have a solid line in the picture there. There's a solid line. That indicates, a solid line indicates that the points that are along the line, in, in the line, right, contained on the line, or actually part of the solution set. Remember, we had the whole issue whether we were going to include or exclude those endpoints before. Well, the same here. If you have a solid line, you use that for the or equal to's, right? That includes those endpoints. And in this case, an end, a border line that's included. <clears throat> if I had something like this, y is less than 3 halves x plus 3, then my line would probably look something like that, except I would have to put, give a dotted line. Let me kind of make a dotted line here. Okay, so you could probably do that quite simply with your pencil. And let's make it in line. Okay, so this would be for less than for excluding the endpoint. And so let me shade the area for less than it would be below the line, right? Oops, okay. So um there you go. Dotted line again. Okay, so anyway, this is how we handle inequalities that are linear. Let's look at some examples so that we can uh, get some of these under our belt. So you have all the skills that you really need to do this, to do this skill. Um, if you are unsure about where to shade, you could always select a test point, and I'll show you how to do that in this next example. Okay, so let's see. Here in this problem, we're asked to sketch the region defined by y is greater than negative x minus 1. Okay? right there. Okay, and notice it's already in slope-intercept form, okay? So that's a good thing. So we have the slope of negative 1 and a y-intercept at 0, negative 1. So let's go ahead and plot that point and use the rise over run to graph the line. So there I have the point 0, negative 1, written, it's in the blue, on the y-axis. That's my y-intercept. So from there, from this point, I want to use the slope, negative 1, okay? Now, rise over run. Okay, we can use the slope of negative 1 as 
negative 1 over 1 or 1 over negative 1. At any rate, it's going to be rise over run. That's how we're going to get to our next points, right? So let's start with using negative 1 over 1, right? Negative 1 over 1 for our rise over run, meaning we're going to go from this point, we are going to, instead of rising 1, we're going to fall 1, and then we'll run positive 1, right? So the next point we get to will be here. Okay, and I'll tell you what, let me go ahead and get rid of that label for now. I'll label them all after. So the point that we get to if we fall one and run one is going to be right there. And that's the point one and negative two. Okay, one negative two. Okay, so again, we can fall one and run one. And we'll get to the points 2, negative 3. Okay, if we go in the other direction, okay, using, let's see, let's go ahead and use 1 over negative 1, okay? So let's get the red pen. I'm going to start again at the middle and the blue dot on our blue point, excuse me. And instead of rising, or instead of falling one, I'm going to rise one, and then I'll run left one. So we will rise one. Okay, we're here. We're going to rise one, and we'll run this way. So whenever you swap out the signs on your slope, you are able to go in the other direction on the line. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. So um, this is the point, negative one, zero. Okay, negative one, zero. So that's plenty of points for our line. Now we can go ahead and fill in the line. But be careful, remember, ultimately we are graphing the inequality y is greater than negative x minus one. Now, it's greater than. So the endpoints or the borderline is actually excluded. Okay, so we want to make this a dotted line. Okay, it's dotted because of the, it's not an equality, it's just greater than. If you look at the little chart I have up above here, so um, let's see, get the top, for, for greater than and less than, okay, that's right here, we have a dashed line which excludes the border. That's just no equal to in it, okay? You only do a solid line when you have the or equal to. That's going to be your solid line on these inequalities, okay? So that's when your border or your in, in solution points are included. You would do the solid line. So now the biggest deal, though, really is where do we shade? And the reason I told you guys to solve it for y, to use your slope-intercept form, right, y's by itself, is you're going to, you're going to shade in the direction of the y's that have respect to the inequality, so y's that are greater than the line. So we would shade, let me get my shader here, we would shade above since it's greater than, okay? The whole region above, okay? All right, that's that, okay? Um, let's move on to another one. Okay, so let's graph the region that is defined by y is less than negative x and then x plus y is equal to 4. Okay, let's take them one at a time. First, let's do y is less than or equal to negative x, and it already has y isolated. So a simple way to do this is to kind of remember that um, the y-intercept here, remember this could be a plus 0. So this guy passes through the origin and of course our slope is negative one so we do have a point at the origin okay for this one okay so there you go and then the slope negative one over one would be instead of rise we'll fall one then run one so this line is going to do a similar thing as the last one but It'll kind of just go one unit up, one unit down. So this is what this one looks like. 
okay? Since it's or equal to, we'll leave it as a solid line, okay? Now we want to shade the region below, wherever the y's are lower than the line, right? And so that's what we'll do. We'll shade the region below this one, okay? All right. Oops. Okay, so now let's go on to the next line. Okay. And let's, let me fill that a little bit in. Okay, good. And let me label it as well. This is y is less than or equal to negative x. Now let's look at x plus y is equal to 4. Okay. Now x plus y, I'm sorry, not equal. I'm sorry, it's supposed to be less than 4. Let me fix that. Less than four. Thank y'all. Less than, okay, I'll just leave it black. Less than four. What we wanna do is get the y alone. Okay, so we're gonna subtract x from both sides. So y is less than negative x plus four. Okay, again, simply we have that slope that's negative one over one. Remember, if you have an integer slope, you just stick it over one and you you got your rise over run. Now the intercept is going to be at zero four. So one, two, three, four. I'll do this one in red, I think. Okay, one, two, three, four. <clears throat> okay, and here's that point. And we'll fall one, run one. Fall one, run one. What's happening here? Okay. So again, it's actually parallel. The lines are parallel. And for this one, we are going to do a dashed line because of the uh, lack of an equal to part of that inequality. Now these are parallel. They'll never intersect, but that's okay. We still need to shade below the line, right? We still need to shade. And I'll do yellow for this one. And since we have blue and yellow, I guess wherever it's green, that'll be the region defined by both of these. So you see where the two colors meet up, the two shaded areas? That would be the region defined by both of these. And coincidentally, when we go into our next um, section, our next little lecture, and we're solving, um, we're solving our systems of linear equations, if we have systems of linear inequalities, this is how we can do that. So the region below y minus y is less than or equal to negative x is actually the solution or the whole region defined by these two together. Okay, hope this helps. You guys have a great day.